First, though, China's military is on high alert with warships surrounding Taiwan as we speak. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi arriving for that highly anticipated trip, the highest level U.S. visit, by the way, to the island in 25 years. It is part of her tour across Asia, one that has been called dangerous, even sparking threats from China to shoot down Pelosi's plane. Tonight, the world is watching as China promises to respond, raising tensions between the U.S. and Beijing even higher. The U.S. Navy, as we speak, standing by, despite the White House saying this is nothing more than intimidation. The stakes are high. Correspondent Kelly Meyer is live for us in Washington, D.C. tonight with the very latest from the White House. Kelly. Well, Marty, this comes at a time of rising tensions between the U.S. and China. And as China flexes its muscles on the world stage, not only as an economic powerhouse, but as a military power as well. After weeks of speculation of will she or won't she go, on Tuesday, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi put the rumors to rest as she touched down in Taiwan. Greeted with open arms in Taipei, people heard shouting welcome Pelosi as she arrived at her hotel. In a Washington Post op-ed published the moment her plane was wheels down, Pelosi defending her visit, writing, We cannot stand by as the CCP proceeds to threaten Taiwan and democracy itself. While across the Straits of Taiwan, a reverse reception. With the Chinese military put on high alert with live fire drills and exercises. Now, there's no reason, as I said yesterday, for Beijing to turn this visit uh, uh, which is consistent with long-standing U.S. policy into some sort of crisis, or use it as a pretext to increase aggressiveness uh, and, and military activity in or around the Taiwan Strait. Pelosi is the first Speaker of the House and highest-ranking U.S. official to set foot in Taiwan since 1997. But much has changed in China in those 25 years. Its economy exploding, now ranking as the world's second largest behind only the U.S. And China is the world's largest manufacturing power, the leader in technology exports. Its military might multiplying with more troops in uniform than any other country and now boasting the largest navy in the world with more than 350 ships and submarines. This as U.S. warships patrol the waters near Taiwan, with the aircraft carrier USS Ronald Reagan and its massive strike force now in the South China Sea, all part of an entrenched U.S. military presence in the Western Pacific. 56,000 troops in Japan, including 24,000 Marines in nearby Okinawa. In South Korea, 30,000. And 12,000 U.S. troops in Guam. The threat from China escalating as their rhetoric ramps up seeing the latest U.S. actions as provocative. The United States should and must bear full responsibility for this. Speaker Pelosi getting a lot of praise from Republicans on Capitol Hill, including Missouri Senator Roy Blunt, sharing today four words he never uttered before, saying, quote, Speaker Pelosi was right. Marnie. All right, Kelly, thank you. I want to bring in retired Lieutenant General Richard Newton, now former Assistant Vice Chief of Staff of the U.S. Air Force. Uh, General, always a pleasure to have you on. As I said a moment ago, the stakes right now are high between the U.S. and China. Talk about China's military might by air, by sea, um, the saber rattling and the critical moment that we find ourselves in. Well, good evening, Marnie. Uh, first off, I think I applaud uh, Speaker Pelosi uh, traveling to Taiwan. As you mentioned, it's the first time we've had a high level delegation. Last, by the way, was Speaker Newt Gingrich back in 1997. But what's changed since then, and certainly most recently, is, is, as you alluded in your question, is a significant modernization of the Chinese military. They're building a, a much larger and more capable uh, naval fleet. Uh, they are also uh, now producing uh, highly effective air combat uh, aircraft. And also what concerns me significantly is the strategic modernization, certainly of their, their strategic missiles, of the intercontinental ballistic missiles and so forth, that really are, are, we now have to consider not necessarily the Russians as a threat in terms of strategic nuclear weapons, but now China, it's a dual threat. So it's a very complex situation. What is now focused on that about 100 miles uh, you know, distance between China mainland and Taiwan called the Taiwan Strait. 
a very complex place to, to fight a battle. Well, you mentioned that you, among others, applaud Pelosi for this visit. Others say it's reckless. Um, is it to a degree putting Taiwanese people and the American people in danger? No, I think the danger is if we are continue to be on the defensive. I think this is, uh, Secretary Pompeo said earlier today that it's important that we we actually go, uh, you know, in terms of offensive, in terms of showing our resolve. The United States is the world superpower, and we've got to stand tall in the saddle, as, as I say, in terms of showing not only our resolve, but our commitment to our allies and our friends, and our friends being Taiwan, but also our friends in the region, Japan, South Korea, and others. So I think it's important that uh, Speaker Pelosi uh, really show United States resolve and, and, and uh, go to Taiwan and do this. I think it's good. By the way, also on the heels, and you and I talked about this endlessly back in August of last year, that withdrawal, that debacle of withdrawal, uh, the fact that we got Al-Zahari on Sunday, now we've got Speaker Pelosi, I believe, in a very good move, uh, diplomatically being in Taiwan and so forth. So I think I think this is exactly what the United States needs to be doing. Well, General, another term that's getting thrown around a lot is strategic ambiguity. We've heard it um, when speaking about the U.S.'s approach and strategy with China. Why is the U.S. playing it so cool right now? Well, in terms of that ambiguity, it really goes back to the Taiwan Act uh, enacted by Congress in 1979 that talks about, uh, again, really wanting to continue with the status quo of Taiwan, making a monicum of independence from China, and, and let Taiwan decide whether or not they want to remain independent or to become part of China. And so that strategic ambiguity actually plays in our favor because uh, it, it allows uh, us to be able to support Taiwan uh, along that act by our Congress and supported by certainly in the United States, but also to maintain some modicum of relationship with China, especially in an economic finance ways. But I think in terms of the military, the national security aspect of this, that strategic ambiguity is very important as this plays out between China and Taiwan. China already responding in the South China Sea. Next week will require heightened alert the next few days, uh, certainly. What is the risk of miscalculation right now? The risk is, is, is moderate. I wouldn't call it high, but there is now increased risk. Uh, as you mentioned at the top of the hour, there's the Reagan battle group there just to the east of Taiwan right now. But you also have the Lincoln, uh, Lincoln battle group based out of Japan. You've also got significant air power in Korea and in Japan and also out of Guam where we can have a continued bomber presence there with stealth bombers and B-52s and B-1s and so forth. But there is a there is a monicum of risk with regard to a miscalculation or a misstep, say, from, from a Chinese ship captain or someone on the, you know, on the mainland and so forth. But I believe the risks of that, uh, again, are, are really What's more important is, is the fact that we show assertive U.S. resolve, supporting a friend, Taiwan, but it's also a message, Marnie, certainly the Chinese, but also a message to our allies. It's very important that we show significant U.S. presence, commitment, and resolve to, to Japan, to South Korea, and others in the region that would want to do harm to our friends and allies, as well as which would end up being harm to our national security interests. Yeah, thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.